Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good evening, friends. You're watching Fact News Network. Uh, this evening, we do have some very serious uh, news that is breaking. This, of course, is running live. Those of you that are watching the broadcast over on Israeli News Live, uh, you're catching the secondhand information here. Uh, we are actually live on Fact News Network. So uh, those of you that are joining us over here, we really appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, of course, NATO preparing to back Russia in a war, excuse me, get that correct, NATO preparing to back Turkey in a war uh, against Russia. That's what it's looking like. And uh, it's amid some new tensions there. We're going to be looking at that in just a moment here. But, uh, uh, you know, Erdogan tried to reach out to Russian President Vladimir Putin to calm the situation down. Putin taking the side of his military there. And, uh, but uh, we do have, let's see, I'm trying to find the right spot. Here we go, right here. This is what I wanted to show you. This is one of the reasons why I'm concerned about what NATO is doing. NATO. Uh, and this is my good friend Renze over in Europe there that sent this to me, uh, sent this video footage here. This is NATO preparing uh, to go to deploy largest ever deployment. Now we know that the U.S. has been doing these drills for, for quite a few years now, uh, and it is obviously setting the stage for the Third World War. Uh, listen into this broadcast, listen, or listen to this little uh, clip here, this one minute clip of NATO and what they're saying about the allies in Europe. And then just keep in mind, Turkey, a NATO member, could declare Article 5 at just about any time. Well, <laughs> let's get some volume on this, Steve. I guess that would really help matters a lot, wouldn't it? Um, any rate there, you know, I'm going to be talking also to you guys tonight about a, a, a product. Uh, I really owe a debt of gratitude to Leon. Uh, he was here with John Moore. And uh, so, Leon, if you happen to catch the broadcast, thank you uh, for telling me about uh, the EMP Shield. Uh, and Leon said you could become a distributor. We actually did become a distributor because uh, it's, it's something I do believe in. And I kept thinking that if you wanted to be able to survive an EMP tech, you'd have to, uh, to have an old vehicle, like a diesel engine or something like that. I had no clue, I had no clue. I guess I've been living under the, in the dark or something that there was actually a product you can buy and install in your car. Uh, I actually got two of them because we have two vehicles and I installed it on uh, my little truck and on the car. Uh, very simple, very easy to do, but I want to tell you guys about it tonight because it'll also, you'll get a discount. I didn't get a discount because I couldn't order it from myself at the time, uh, but they'll actually help the ministry here as well. So I'll share that with you here at the end of this broadcast. Anyway, let's the listen up to this. Is the largest deployment of military personnel and equipment from the U.S. to Europe for largest in more than 25 years. In 25 this years. This national exercise will build strategic readiness and demonstrate our ability to rapidly deploy a large combat credible force to respond to any crisis. Once on the continent, U.S. forces will spread out across Europe to participate in various link exercises. <coughs> Defender Europe 20 is a whole of Europe exercise that will require the support of our allies and partners across the theater and help build our collective readiness and increase interoperability. Defender Europe 20 shows that NATO allies and partners stand stronger together and that the U.S. commitment to NATO is ironclad. Defender Europe 20 will conclude when all U.S.-based forces and equipment have successfully redeployed back to the United States. That's NATO talking about that there. Now, let's back up just for a moment here. I need to really show you some things that are going on. Uh, Russia and Turkey, the conflict in Syria escalates amid new troop deaths. That's Turkish troop deaths. Uh, the first report I saw that came out just a little while ago, there were nine, but that has now been up. Newsweek covering this article here this afternoon as well is saying that as many as uh, 33 Turkish soldiers were killed in airstrikes blamed on the Syrian government. Uh, so it's not being blamed directly on the Russian government as of yet, but you can only imagine Russia has been also striking Turkish armaments as well. 
But I think what they're trying to do, they're trying to allow Turkey to go to a direct war conflict with Syria, keeping Russia out of it and using NATO as the fear tactic to do this. But again, I need to clarify some things. I've told you guys, I really, really, really believe President Vladimir Putin is playing the card with Prime Minister Netanyahu. They want Syria taken down. Plain and simple. Uh, they want this war to finish destabilizing all of Europe. You know, I, I even took, guys, I even threw up here Albert Pike, right? Now, these are not prophecies of Albert Pike. This is just Albert Pike. He's the Freemason, Illuminati, part of the New World Order. But he spoke about the first two world wars. First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia and make that country a fortress of atheistic communism. He wrote this before this ever happened, right? This is not prophecy. This is going by the playbook. Let me, let me blow this up big enough. I want to make sure you, sure you guys can see what Albert Pike had to say there, right? Now, so he brought out about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia, making that country's fortress uh, an atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the adjunct agents of the Illuminati between the British and the Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. And at the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Hello. You know what thrives under communism? Two religions. Two religions. And I won't name them. You figure that one out. Right. Catholicism, I will say that, you know, you can say something about Catholicism. That's not that's not a big deal. You know, Pope Pope wants to do it. You can say anything you want. And I know that for a fact, because my wife uh, was under communism, not under the Soviet Union, but under communism because she was in behind what they call the Iron Curtain there and uh, couldn't go to med school because she wasn't Catholic. But if she'd have been Roman Catholic and this was a fact, they approached uh, her father and said, if you'll come, you know, she was Roman Catholic, you could go to medical school. Hmm. Won't go into who the other one is. Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascist and the political Zionist. This war must be brought about so that the Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism, uh, excuse me, that political, here let me back up, Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine during the Second World War. Uh, international communism must be strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that for you guys watching live. The camera or battery is weak on the phone there and it kind of blocks everything out. All right. Now, now we got to go there to let's look at what he says about the Third World War. I'm not reading it all. I'll put the link in there for you. Third World War must be uh, fomented, uh, fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually, right, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations once more divided on this issue will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilist and the atheist, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origins of savagery, of the most bloody turmoil. That's pretty much what's been going on. Now, 
I can't, I'm not going to say here, I will say that, I won't say here, but we know who's working with them. We know who's worked with the communist in the past. We know who worked with the communists to overthrow all these nations uh, in these other wars. And uh, if you want to know more about those things, we'll share those things with, on Patreon. And I have, we are working on a broadcast for Patreon, so please be patient with us on that. We should have it up by this weekend. Uh, share more things with you. So again, I do not endorse Albert Pike at all. Please understand, I do not, all right? And these are not prophecies. These are plans, the plans that they had to do these things. So anyway, uh, we're dealing with this situation right here. Now let's just see. Nobody has done more than what I have done and at the same time. I don't. Let me just see what the president says here. I don't even know. Well, it's not playing for me on this end here. Uh, but let's move on then. Erdogan, according to the Russian insider, uh, reached out, said here, the Russian Syrian general staffs and their men have been doing uh, the Turks what no one has achieved in the Middle East since 1917. So the Sultan has called the Tsar three times this month, so far in January, once by telephone, twice by a face-to-face -face meeting, and twice by telephone in December. Every time the telephone rings, it has a Kremlin communique doesn't fail to mention at the Turkish side's initiative. On the battlefields of northwest Syria, and the initiative at the start of each day has been the Turkish side too. But at the end of the day, Russians have inflicted defeat. Not often. And 500 years of communication between the Porte and the Kremlin has the subliminal messages been so clear. There, there is another, excuse me, subliminal message from the Kremlin. We, Dmitry Peskov, the Turkish-speaking spokesman for the Russian president, said on Wednesday, used to be satisfied with agreements reached on Sochi more than a year ago, and this satisfaction was mutual. However, we are completely dissatisfied now that the militants and terrorists have begun advancing from Idlib and attacking Syrian forces and Russian military installations. This is a signal from the Moscow lobby for the Turks that it is that it too is in retreat from the Russian Defense Ministry and General Staff. Basically, what it comes down to at the end of the day, Putin is standing behind his uh, his military men about what's going on in uh, Syria, uh, and 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 again, I say that that Putin is got his plans very close ally to to Israel, but at the same time, uh, Putin doesn't want to lose his men on the battlefield because of a NATO battle. And there again, though, uh, we could go into the conspiracy side of things. I could discuss with you what I what my feelings are on that. Uh, I have shared those much on Israeli News Live about. Uh, this is a planned an ag is a planned agenda, very much a planned agenda. And when I say planned agenda, the, the, this whole notion that's been shared with me by different uh, uh, inside sources, everything from people in Washington, D.C. to uh, Middle East uh, correspondents that I have, uh, Israeli correspondents that I have, that there is coming a war that's going to affect us here in the United States. Uh, th listen, and, and, I, and I, it's interesting because I was having a conversation today with uh, one of the men there at uh, em, um, the EMP Shield company there, empshield.com, uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this, so, but um, these were the people that helped, set, helped me get set up in this, in this program here, and it's because I just believe in it that passionately. Uh, if you, and I'll just say it real quick, if you're going on there, because some people will start clicking on it while they're there, any product you see on there, if you want to get it, if you type in INL50, INL50, like if, let's say if I'm just going to add this to the cart right now, this is the one for your car, uh, $339 is the markdown price, it was $389, but if you add that to your cart, right? And then you're going to go check out. Once you get to the checkout line, let me figure out how to get to the checkout line. I did this before, but here we go. I got two in the basket. All right. That's what it says right now. Cause I actually clicked on it earlier just for practice. All right. And let me put it down to one. All right. Update the cart. But right there on that page as well, you'll see it says apply coupon right there. Apply coupon. Just to the left is where you can apply it. INL50 is that code. Now when I apply it, see right now, 
And I don't know how well you can see this, so I'll blow the, image, the screen up a little bit so you can see this better. All right. It's $339 right now, but if I apply the coupon, that price is going to change by $50. You're going to get a discount because you ordered it through Israeli News Live, and there it is. Coupon INL50 has been applied. They removed $50. It's now $289, and they will also contribute uh, a, a percentage to Israeli News Live for being able to tell you about the product. I actually did a video of me putting it on our little truck there, and uh, I'll post that on Israeli News Live and on Fact News Network as well for you guys. So you can see it's very simple. It took me about 30 minutes to do it because only three leads, one for the positive, one for the ground on your vehicle, and then a green ground wire that goes to the frame of the vehicle. Um, but I heard a lot of good things about this, and I am very concerned. It also protects against lightning strikes and also solar flare thingies, that type stuff as well. I was told though today by the people that have this that they are working on a huge, huge contract for the government right now. Uh, and that's a lot, of, a lot of things are going on out there about what's happening. So anyway, let me share some more of this news information with you. This was another disturb, disturbing thing put out by Abdullah uh, Bus, uh, Buskert uh, on his Twitter page. I've followed this guy since I've been on Twitter now. He's always got a lot of good information. Uh, but I want to play you this guy here, and then we'll go back and read what he actually says in English. It's a Turkish news broadcaster. All right. So those of you that are watching from Turkey, I'm sure you know what he's saying, but uh, he translates it on here. Russia will be dismembered from within. There are 25 million Muslims in Russia. We fought Russia 16 times in the past. We will do it again. Our vengeance will be quite terrible, says a regular commentator of Haber News Network that is owned by Erdogan's family in Turkey. Uh, so rhetoric is starting up even in Turkey against Russia. Uh, we also have this one here. This was, oh, we already did that. That's the NATO one there. And then another thing I noticed as well, because I mentioned to you the title of the article here, NATO preparing to back, uh, you know, back Turkey in this Russian uh, issue. Secretary Pompeo tweeted out today, 3 p.m. Uh, this evening, the U.S. is imposing sanctions on 13 foreign entities and individuals in China, Iraq, Russia, and Turkey for supporting proliferation programs in Iran, North Korea. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a different issue altogether. Uh, a little bit. Of, uh, uh, this is really to try to stop Iran from getting uh, its missile capabilities. Uh, that's interesting, though, that they mentioned Turkey in this. I wonder if the U.S. is going to play hardball on a battle. Well, no, they're not going to play hardball because they want Syria to go down. Uh, anyway, also exclusive U.S. moles using sweeping powers to ramp up production of the coronavirus protective gear. This was come out on uh, Reuters today. President Donald Trump administration is considering invoking special powers through a law called the Defense Production Act to rapidly expand domestic manufacturing of protective masks and clothing to combat the coronavirus in the United States, two U.S. officials told Reuters. The use of the law passed by Congress in 1950 at the outskirt of the Korean War. Now, I, I do want to clarify something as well. And I thought people could read between the lines when we uh, broadcast on Israeli News Live yesterday, but let me just kind of clarify this for you. The coronavirus, it, it is a virus, but it is also, from what I have been told, it is a biological weapon. It was, in other words, it's, it's a man-made virus. That's what makes it a biological weapon. And it is being downplayed majorly. And the coronavirus is only one of many man-made evil things that we can see on the horizon that are coming. Is it for depopulation agenda? I don't know. My thought, well, it's just another one to add to the list. According to my source in the Middle East there, the death rate is not 2.3%. It's actually 15% of people that contract 
this alleged virus. And I still, like I said, it, it, it acts like a virus, but it is a manufactured. So when I said the other day, speaking of it more from the standpoint of a virus, I'm also trying to be a little bit cautious in what I'm saying. Because when you begin to talk about this, uh, there are channels that are getting closed just for going against mainstream media idea about it. In fact, the President of the United States is also um, now dictating what can be spoken about on this. Let me see if it's here. Nope, I don't have it up there now. Uh, but uh, the President is also now instructed that it's actually under Mike, Mike Pence has instructed this, but I'm sure through the President of the United States as well, um, that no medical person can put out any information, do any kind of interviews without first being screened about what's going to be said about this. Uh, we shared with you the other day, the reason we shared about the, the vitamin C intravenously is because we also know that intravenous vitamin C also can fight um, how would you put it there? Toxic chemicals. That's one reason why I brought this to your attention as well. So I wanted to make sure I make that clear for you guys. I didn't just do this just to do it. I, I, I brought this out for a reason. And I'm, I'm just, I don't want to get too deep into the debate. I want to make sure you're aware of some options that you might have that could help you. Um, and I think that, you know, it is wise decision to maybe have supplies stocked up in your home uh, for a couple of months in the event they were to go on a um, quarantine type of order. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I've been hearing some really bad things too about uh, a vaccine that was developed in China, but I'm not going to speak on that tonight because I don't know enough about it as of yet, but uh, we'll see what we can find out about this. I, I really... I'm telling you, friends, I, I see New World Order written all over these things that are happening. Uh, everything from the wars to the viruses, and from what I understand, a lot of other bad things are coming our way. Uh, anyway, though, listen, I, I, I do not want people to feel pressured over buying something because you guys know I am not a person to market anything. But uh, if you're like me, you've been concerned about an EMP strike if it happened. How would that affect us? You know, just if you go there, I'll put a link to the website in there, empshield.com. Uh, and they actually give us a link, empshield.com, INL50. But it just brings you to that blank page there. And then you have to kind of, uh, you have to kind of go from there to do it. But the, 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 the representative for them of EMP Shield also said to me, you got to be careful because there's a lot of advertisements on there. They said if you click away from the website looking at one of the promotions that talks about it, the videos, unless you come back, come back to the actual site and use your coupon code of INL50, you won't get the discount. Uh, that's very important. They said that you, you're aware of that. And so uh, pray about it if it's something you feel led to do. Uh, I know there might be women out there that are feel a little un uncomfortable about getting something like that. How would I attach it to my car? You'd probably have to get a local mechanic or somebody to help you, but I don't think it'd be expensive to have it uh, uh, attached because as I put the video up uh, either this evening or tomorrow, I'll put a video of how I put it on. It is very, very simple to attach to, to your vehicle. So at any rate, uh, just pray about that and uh, uh, and we'll just see how God leads. I hope we don't have an EMP attack, but uh, not just an EMP attack, even a nuclear strike, if you were in a distance of where that would affect you, it could also cause a lot of problems, a lot of issues. But anyway, blessings to you all. Thank you. Thank you for watching the broadcast this evening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Fact News Network and INL. Good evening.